Hey everybody, Jason here with GDT Basics and the video question line. Today's topic is ring gauges and size dimensions. The question submitted is I'm speaking of the size of the outside diameter 2.002 to 2.005 with a circularity of 7 thousandths of an inch. If we verify the OD with a go no go ring gauge, will this not essentially take tolerance away from the part since we all know a 2.005 ring gauge will not fit over a 2.005 inch diameter? How does circularity come into play? If the part has a spot reading, slightly oversized going around the diameter, but the average comes in utilizing the 0 .007 circularity, are the parts not to print spec? Let's take a look at the part here. So what we have going on is we have a size tolerance. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with rule number one, we know that size tolerances also control the form of this feature. And what rule number one says in the standards is that we must adhere to a perfect envelope at MMC when considering size and form of a feature of size. So if we picture this cross section looking something like this, and our cylinder has a bit of bow to it, right? Uh, it bows a little bit. What we need to make sure is that that bow in size and form doesn't deviate beyond an envelope of perfect form at MMC. And that's exactly what the standard is telling us. And rule number one is applied by default to every feature of size, and it's a functional thing. Uh, if designers are designing to point uh, 2.005 as the largest diameter this feature will ever be, and 2.002 as the smallest, you're guaranteeing that anything mating with this outside diameter uh, as long as it's 2.005 or larger will always fit over this hole. Uh, that is the boundary that both features are utilizing. So we're going to utilize and make sure this part doesn't cross paths with this boundary because the mating part might do the same thing. So as long as we both stay clear of this boundary and don't deviate beyond this boundary from the male and the female side of this uh, part, we should have clearance at a minimum of zero between those two parts. And so we're relying on that boundary of MMC and relying that we don't cross it between the combination of size and form. So again, we want to make sure in a go no go gauge, such as a ring gauge is a perfect, uh, theoretically perfect sized boundary. So you would have a ring gauge who measures at 2.005 to check rule number one of this feature of size. And as long as that passes through here, uh, we've checked one element of size. And so you're absolutely right. If the diameter from here to here measures 2.005 and there's form error, that form error is going to deviate inside of this envelope, thus failing that part. It has deviated beyond that functional envelope and you should reject that part. Now, if this diameter measures small, such as 2.002, you're allowing a little bit of form error to occur a little bit of bow to occur and still not deviate beyond that envelope of perfect form at MMC. And so again, anything that measures at 2.005 on the diameter more than likely is a failing part. Any local size uh, or spot size as you're calling it, any spot size has to be inside these tolerances. So we can't be any smaller than 2.002. So if we check from here to here, this can't be any smaller than 2.002 and the envelope size can't be any larger than 2.005. And this, these two values, the, the largest envelope reported and the smallest local size for external features, uh, those are two reportable values that must be reported per the ASME Y14.45 standard to pass a size dimension and its tolerance. And so this is directly backed up by a standard uh, and again, all of it is centered around the functionality of the part, ensuring that tolerances are interpreted one way uh, and they're designed to that one way as well. Uh, it just gets everybody on the speaking the same language. One thing I will point out on this drawing, however, is since rule number one is controlling the feature of size, uh, so if we have a cross section that looks something like this, a little uh, wobbly, a little obround, if you will, um, and you're trying to control the circularity to seven thousandths, Rule number one is already controlling circularity of this feature of size to three thousands. So this is absolutely illegal and redundant. You will never see circularity error of six thousands. You'll never see circularity of five thousands because rule number one is going to immediately reject anything that has a circularity error of more than three thousands because from here to here, 
cannot get any smaller than 2.002, .002, and the envelope of perfect form is going to restrict all of the surface from deviating beyond this envelope of 2.005. So the combined effect of these local sizes and this envelope size is the equivalent of saying the circularity of this feature can't be any more than the difference between these two values, which is three thousandths. Uh, so if you do the math, you'll find that rule number one on a size dimension also controls the form. And so three thousandths of circularity is already being controlled here identifying or re-identifying circularity to 7,000 down here is redundant and actually illegal per the standards. Um, you will never see more than 3,000 and past this size dimension. So hopefully this answers your question a little bit um, and helps clarify things. Uh, you are not losing tolerance as much as it is the go, no-go gauging is going to help you dial into the exact way the standard needs this to be interpreted. Um, and we don't get to average out uh, any of the diameters. We don't get to check anything like that. It is simply a two-point check. Any two-point check needs to be inside these size limits. And then we need to make sure the entire feature, both in cross-section and form down the cylinder, is inside an envelope of perfect form at 2.005. So again, hopefully that answers your question and thanks for tuning in. Our goal is to be your best source for GD&T information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GD&T on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GD&T community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GD&T and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.